Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. A pleasure to have you here with us in London for the film festival. Maybe you could introduce the film, tell us a bit about what people can expect from the story. All right, um, so my name is Mary and the movie is called Ama Gloria. And actually it's a story of a very young girl. She's like six years old and she has been raised by a nanny, you know? And the nanny, her name is Gloria. And um, one day Gloria arrives and tells her that she has to go back to her country and then to leave her. And the little child don't understand why. She's like heartbreaking and she asks Gloria, it was, it's a kind of uh, promise to see her a last time. So they will spend the last summer together in Cabo Verde, in the island of Gloria. That's the story, basically. And tell us a bit about the genesis of the project. Where did the idea first come to you and why did you want to make the film? Well, actually, I was raised by someone named Lorinda, not Gloria. And um, she raised me until my six, six, yeah, we say that. And then she had to go back to her country, actually. And at that time, I could not understand why. And I didn't realize the complexity of uh, her situation. And so I decided to make a movie about her and um, the movie is dedicated to her actually and then I realized that at least in France I don't know here but we have um, a lot of nannies and they all share the same story they have to leave their own children in their country in order to raise all children in Western countries so that was the beginning of the the writing let's say and how did you decide on your cast and how did you work with them to achieve your vision? Well, actually, I don't decide much, um, not my type, uh, but I did a casting sauvage, what we call casting sauvage. So I went to the street, meet a lot of people, and then I met uh, Ilsa Moreno, and she was from Cabo Verde. And actually, she's a real nanny, and she had to, you know, leave her own children to her mother in order to come in France. So I decided she will act the main character, and um, I will rewrite all my movie with her story in mind and her background. And actually, I shot in her city, in her hometown, in Cabo Verde. And for the young one, it was easy. She's like five and a an half, so she was not a professional, of course. And then she's the first child I've met, and I fell in love with, you know, the, the, her face and the way she saw the, I mean, she saw the world somehow. And what was the shoot like? What were some of the challenges, perhaps along the way, but on the other side, some of the highlights? Okay, the challenges were, I mean, many challenges actually. Um, first, we have to shoot in Cabo Verde, and there is no industry there, so nothing. So we have to bring all the camera with us in our luggage and actually I shot without any equipment besides one camera so it's really like dry way to but it was fun actually and then we have to form half of the team there in Cabo Verde uh, with Cabo Verdean um, guys uh, because we need to we needed to be a team you know and we were very few girls to make the movie so we needed help and we formed them. So that was another challenge, but then it went pretty well. I mean, it was fun. Um, and then um, I have animation sequences in the movie, which is also quite difficult to make, but fun also. And um, yeah, basically a lot of challenge, a lot of challenge. But then to shoot with a child, it's not easy because you have only four hours a day to shoot. But because she's who she is, it went, I guess, pretty well, but... Yeah. And ultimately, what do you hope people will take away from watching the film? I mean, there's so many themes thrown up by it, you know, the, 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 the grief, the loss, but also that, thing, that element of growing up and kind of understanding a broader context that is impossible for, for a young child to understand until they're older, perhaps. Maybe that's why it took me uh, the whole movie to explore that, you know, that journey. But yes, that's about grief. That's, but that's also about, and more than that, it's about love. Love can happen and you don't expect it. And I guess it also throws up this idea of kind of, you know, in the sort of post-colonial world, still kind of, you know, like you say, having to leave your own kids behind to, to 
raise other people's children and the sort of dynamics at play there, which we can't kind of forget. History has sort of shaped those things. Well, actually, it's still happening. And uh, that's the result of colonialism. And it's, of course, it's true that it's completely amazing to, to realize that all those women, doesn't ha they don't have any choices. They have to come here and they have to send money back there. And uh, yes, it's absolutely unfair and, and a weird and tricky situation. But what is more than that? I mean, more scandalous for me. It's, for example, in France, we don't talk about it. That's really weird because those women are in her house raising our child, as we say, and nobody asks them, who are you, where are you coming from, do you have children, what's your family name? They only have, you know, Gloria, Lorraine, no names. So I think really it's crazy that in this intimacy, nobody's talking about that. And there is something very taboo. And it's more taboo when you have love. Because then the parents, they, they don't want to recognize it as it is, as love. And education too, because they gave education to the children. So I, really, it's, it's weird. We don't talk about it. And that's really scandalous for me, not to talk about it. The situation is the situation. We know it. But not to talk about it, that's weird. And do you think that's also something that's, the more we open up the, the landscape to different stories being told, you know, different people telling stories, that female experience and yeah. that, that very female nuanced, gaze, yeah. um, you know, like you say, no one's ever really representing those people on screen or investigating their, their lives and, and their experience. So hopefully we'll see more films like this because it's very important to show that breadth of experience. I'm pretty sure we will, and the more directors, female directors, for example, that we, we will have, yes, they will, I mean, yes, sorry for my English, but yes, I hope it's going to be, you know, we will have more storytelling like that because more women will be involved in the process of making a movie and writing a movie and choose the subject and the main character, and yeah. And what does it mean to you to have your film here at London Film Festival? It's great. And it's so international and so big. The city is big, really big. Yeah, I'm impressed, actually. <laughs> um, I know you've already had the film. It was in Cannes, right? Has yeah. it been on quite a journey? What, what has that been like? And, and how's the reception been so far? Was it what you expected? Actually, I receive a lot of love. And that's really, that's something. Yeah, a lot of love. Did you feel that it would perhaps play out differently in France than, than elsewhere? That's a good question. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thank you so much no, for sharing all that with me.